What is going on, IF Warriors? It's your boy Edward V, and today we're gonna talk about diet breaks versus continuous dieting. Now, to be clear, this is not an intermittent fasting video. Intermittent fasting is about meal timing, and this video is actually looking at diet strategy in regards to calorie control. Now, I understand that I normally do videos on intermittent fasting studies, but I do believe that this information can be very helpful for you in regards to weight loss. Now, let's go ahead and break down diet breaks versus continuous dieting. Stay tuned. A diet break it does it involve what you're eating does it involve just doing whatever you want and eating whatever you want what is diet breaks exactly well a diet break is when you take blocks of time to actually eat at maintenance so it is still a controlled process you're still dieting when you do a diet break you're still managing your calories still looking at your macros you're still doing calorie control the only thing is that you are no longer trying to be at a caloric deficit you're trying to be at a caloric maintenance level and this idea to even implement this strategy of moving from a caloric deficit to times of caloric maintenance and back to caloric deficits and then back to times of caloric maintenance came about somewhat by accident during a 2012 study of weight relapse. The study ran by Dr. Wing and colleagues was actually trying to see what happens if you do eat at maintenance and how that weight relapse would occur. So they had groups of people who would be just in a continuous diet and then groups of people who would have breaks in their diet and eat at a caloric maintenance. What they realized that after the exact amount of time, the weight loss was actually equivalent to that of the group that was doing continuous dieting. So the group that was eating less and then eating at maintenance and then eating less had the same weight loss as the group that was eating less throughout the entire period. This raised a lot of eyebrows. A lot of people were speculating and hypothesizing that if you were to remove those diet break times and give them exactly the same amount of energy restriction time frame as a group that's doing just energy restriction and implement some diet breaks within that then would we see more weight loss in that group than the continuous energy restriction group now if this confused you let me just explain it this way if group a was in a caloric deficit for 16 weeks straight that will be a total of 16 weeks in a caloric deficit if group b implemented a diet break strategy they would essentially be doing the diet for over 30 weeks because you would have to remove the diet break weeks so that they could have a total of 16 weeks of being in a caloric deficit so that it can match with group a so they would have two weeks in a deficit two weeks on maintenance two weeks in a deficit two weeks on maintenance which essentially double their time frame so that they can match the same amount of 16 weeks of group a being in a caloric deficit and that's exactly what happened in 2017 dr. Byrne and colleagues published the matador study now the name matador is simply an acronym it stands for minimizing adaptive thermogenesis and deactivating obesity rebound so basically this setup was to see if the diet break can not only reduce fat loss more effectively but also prevent weight regain or relapse in weight because the more important thing is not what you're doing during your diet is can you keep the weight off because that tends to be the more difficult part as most people regain their weight after weight loss so basically they looked at things like resting energy expenditure because when it's all said and done calories in versus calories out has to be accounted for so the theory was that the resting energy expenditure because of these calorie maintenance days do not decrease aggressively in the group that is implementing the diet breaks which is why they may have an advantage versus someone who's just doing a continuous energy restriction and this study found just that they looked at resting energy expenditure and it was aggressively suppressed in the energy restriction group but you can see falls and rises in the diet break group so it would fall during the diet weeks and it would rise during the diet break weeks and remember it was always two weeks in two weeks out so who were the participants it was about 50 obese males they split them up into two groups 23 was doing continuous energy restriction and 24 were doing the diet breaks intermittent energy restriction two weeks in two weeks out as i mentioned to make it equivalent 16 weeks on each group in a caloric deficit the intermittent energy restriction group had to do about 30 total weeks it was more of a dropout in the diet break group as they ended with 17 participants 
and the Continuous Energy Restriction Group ended with 19 participants. But those are pretty good dropout rates as the majority of the people in the groups stayed and completed the program. What they saw was that the Diet Break Group actually lost more fat and protected their resting energy expenditure, their metabolism, over the Continuous Energy Restriction Group. But the only caveat is that in timing perspective, it takes longer to pull this off. If you were to just do them at the same time frame, you would most likely lose the same amount of weight. The more important thing that diet breaks can give you is in the follow-up and how much weight you can regain or how much weight you can keep off after the diet is over. And in the follow-up that they did, the diet break group regained the least amount of weight. Mind you, both groups regained weight because they're off a diet, this is gonna happen. But the diet break group regained the least amount and it was probably because they were protecting their metabolic rate as much as possible by doing this two week in, two week out strategy. But it took them 30 weeks to pull this off, which is about seven and a half months. So yes, diet breaks are showing some type of metabolic advantage because of the protection of your metabolic rate. The adaptive thermogenesis, the metabolic adaptation is reduced significantly in groups that do diet breaks. So basically, if time is not of the essence, diet breaks can work for you if you're looking for long-term overall lifestyle where you don't suppress your metabolic rate so aggressively I'll have the links to the studies below but keep in mind this study has to be replicated multiple times although it was tightly controlled and the resting energy expenditure were very similar and matched that of studies of metabolic wards which is when participants aren't even allowed to go home so everything is 100% controlled and they also look at resting energy expenditure in a metabolic chamber so they get more accurate information on that as well and based on the data of the matador study those were very similar to data in a metabolic ward study so we could safely assume that the participants were following the strict diet throughout the entire program. So this is just something for you to think about if you were looking for strategies within the diet or within the diet setup to protect your metabolic rate. And of course, I want to thank my patrons from my Patreon, and I'm going to go ahead and put their names right up here.